a method or function is simply a block of code. That's all it is. But to understand that properly, you have to go back in time. In the old days, we used to write code very procedurally. And that simply means we wrote line after line, and we proceeded down the line like that. And that was all well and good, but you can imagine that what if we wanted to write another block of code that didn't have this element? Well, we would actually have to write another block of code without that element in it, and then proceed down that line. And now look at this problem. We have repeated code on both sides, and we never, ever, ever want to repeat code if we can help it. So, what a functional method is, it's the same kind of idea, except each of those bits of code is contained inside its own function or method. And why is that a good thing? Well, in order to get that effect that I had before, if I wanted to call this, 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 and this, I would write another function, and that function would call those in order. One, two, three, and four. But if I wanted to call something that called only this, this, and this, then I could write a separate function and say, I want you to call one, three, and four. And you'll notice we have repeated none of this code. We've simply called each function or method in a different order inside of these. And this is the basic building blocks of everything you're going to write. You're going to write what's called a class, and look at my other video and you'll understand what those are. But just think of a class as something that holds a bunch of variables and a bunch of methods or functions. So I've got my class here. And then inside of the class, I could have another method here. And this method would call method one, two, or three, and do some kind of functions to it, some kind of maths, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And I would never ever repeat methods one, two, or three, would I? So that's the whole idea behind methods and functions. It's to hold a bit of functionality inside of a self-contained module. Now, what you see these days, and it's very bad practice, is you'll see a method written like this and like this, and someone might have, you know, 200 lines of code in it. And this is going back to procedural programming. And then you'll see them write another method, and maybe they'll have 50 lines of code, but inside of there they'll have three repeated lines, and those repeated lines are the same as the ones in the other method. So again, they are repeating code. Do not repeat yourself. We call this dry in programming. So whenever you are programming and you're writing functions or methods, your singular goal should be to make them as small as possible. So I'd write my method with my code in it. And then inside of that method, I would keep my code lines to an absolute minimum. One, two, three lines at most. Now, of course, you'll break the rules sometimes, and that's okay. But if you aim for this, your programs will be much more portable and much easier to debug, actually, versus when you have something absolutely ridiculous like this. This is really hard to debug and find problems. So I've just saved you probably a few months of time over your lifetime by telling you to make your methods and functions as short as possible.